quarrels with the argumentative gondoliers, who has reddish eyebrows and often bears his white teeth as he struggles to guide the boat. Now, friends, we see that gondolier, the boat rider, being very argumentative because he is infurious, he is angry. And gondolier also had the problem that he was not having the license for the boat to take to those areas where Akinbag was heading towards. So, gondolier was very angry and he was grinning in anger. The man refuses to turn the boat around or to inform his passengers of how much the ride will cost, saying simply, you will pay. Now, gondoliers did not want to interact with the passengers because his boat did not have any license, number one. And number two, the place where he was heading towards that was not safe for him because of the arrival of police. So, uh, he wanted to charge more but that he could not do. That is why individually he wanted to take more money from the passengers. So, he did not say any exact amount to the passengers. Akenbach again feels himself sinking into a topper. Topper means lethargy, being lazy, because exhausted because of so many reasons. Because of uh, ill health, because of exhaustion because of tiredness, etc. They reach the shore and Akinbag goes to get change to pay the gondoliers, but upon returning, he finds the man has vanished. As I told you, gondolier did not have license, so gondolier did not wait for money. He took money from other people and then he went to his respective place. An old man tells him that the gondolier owns no license is it is a criminal act and left to avoid the police gondolier who had got the akin back to his place he did not have license so he went back with he didn't want to he didn't want to create any trouble for himself therefore he went back without taking money from the writer akin back once at the hotel akin back settles into his room and then goes down to wait in the parlor until dinner. Now, Akinbag did not have any other work, so he, he goes to the hotel and then he remains in the parlor area. Parlor is the living area. The hotel guests are an international mix at a nearby table. Now, he finds where he was sitting. From there, he sees that there are guests of from international arenas that is different countries and uh, they were on the table i can back notices three adolescent girls and a boy all speaking polish and accompanied by a governess now from this hotel he was able to see four people and they were adolescent girls and a boy now these were polish nationalities okay they were from poland and they had a governess governess means the one who takes care of these girls and boys boy the boy appeared to be around 14 and akenbach finds him entirely beautiful with his golden ringlets now akenbach while being in there in the hotel he sees this polish boy whose name is Tadzio. He's just 14 years old and this boy is extremely beautiful. He's so beautiful and he has golden ringlets. So this had made his beauty to another level. It had taken his beauty to another level and this Akenbach being a, who was a writer becomes so much attracted to this boy. Now, this scene becomes so extraordinary for him because the thing he was longing for that has come to him automatically. Now, he started thanking God because he found what he wanted. A divine serenity, a countenance suggestive of Greek sculpture and dressed in a child's blue sailor suit. Now, 
Akinbag started comparing this boy's beauty with a Greek artwork. Greek artwork. Okay, so he was enchanted by his smile, his appearance, the way he looked and his dress as well, which was in blue color. Okay, which was in blue color. The boy is rich, pampered, aspect is in sharp contrast to his sister's stiff chaste dresses. Now, this boy was extraordinary compared to those ladies, those girls who had come along with this troop. The children's mother appeared to lead them into the dining room. Now, from distance, he was looking at their activities as well. Mother was very much caring towards these children. He, her aristocratic clothes and jewellery suggest that the family possesses great wealth. Now, their dress, their maneuver tells the writer that they are rich by mannerism and as well as by wealth. See, there are two kinds of people in this world. One who is rich by money and another one who are rich by their mannerism. Alright, so there is hardly anyone to find both these qualities in one person or one family. So this boy and his family had both money and mannerism. They were not boitrous. They were not ill-educated. They had mannerism. Who They were so respectful to others. The way they spoke, the way they ate, the way they sat, all those activities revealed about this family and Akenbag was so impressed by this. As the boy exists, exits behind her, his eyes meet Akenbag's. Now, Akenbag was looking at this family continuously and now this boy also exchanges the glare or glance. The boy was also able to see this man, old man, who was looking at them. The next morning, Akinbag finds the weather still overcast and the air heavy. Now, next day also, he was not continuing with his plan because the weather was not good. And remember, whenever we talk about weather uh, being unconducive, it is all because of global warming that we have caused to entire Earth. Akinbag recalls a previous visit to Venice during which similar weather had caused him to fail, to fall ill and forced him to return home. Now here Akenbag is talking about his past experience. He had come to Venice earlier days as well, couple of years back, but the weather did not allow him to visit Venice properly and he was wondering whether the same is going to happen this year as well, this time as well. Now he was wondering over this, and he was very disappointed as well. But he was happy to see this Tadzio, this boy Tadzio. Let us see. Now, uh, one more thing I'll tell you that whenever we are talking about these kind of situation, please remember it is a human being who has destroyed earth. And not only in Venice, whether it is Russia, whether it is England, whether it is India, the weather condition is dilapidating at very alarming rate. So this you have to focus. Global warming and the activities of people who are making global warming to an intense level are the culprits. So in the background we should imagine all those things are happening because of excessive use of resources from earth. He wonders whether this trip will end the same way. He wanted to have enjoyment. He wanted to explore entire Venice, which he could not do because of weather issues. At breakfast, Akenbach sees the Polish boy arriving late to his family's table. He is again startled by the boy's godlike beauty. Now see, Akenbach had become so much enchanted by this boy that he was not able to take off his eyes from this little 14-year-old boy. Akinbag mentally 
compares the boy to Eros, the Greek god of love, and finds in his complexion the scene of Parian marble. Now see, there are two comparisons. Number one, he had god-like halo, okay, because of bright face, because of good nature, he compares that boy to Eros, the god of love. Next, he compares his complexion to a Parian marble. Parian are uh, usually white in color. So that complexion is being compared to that boy's appearance. Kenbag spends the morning on the hotel's beach, delighting in the spectacle of carefree and playful vacationers. Now, Akenberg did not want to go out. He just remained there and looked at the beach and this and that, whichever things were happening nearby beach. And he did nothing else than that. He muses that he finds the sea seductive because it embodies, because it represents the unarticulated and immeasurable a nothingness for which Akenberg guiltily longs of you know, attracting or uh, enrapturing people towards it. So C has the quality of it. No one will say that C is bad. Okay, I don't want to go to nearby C. I hate beach. Nobody will say that because it is nature and nature is liked by everybody. And nature cannot be, you know, defined in two or three lines. Its definition is beyond our imagination. Right. And apart from that, it depends upon the poet or the writer, how they interpret, how they, you know, uh, what they use for making the meaning of sea, water, human being and this and that. Going to be guilty. And why guilty? See, being old man, he was having affections and that too negative affections for this Little boy Tadzio. I'm telling negative uh, feeling because he was looking at this boy just like lovers. Not as a child. We have affection for children. But this was not child uh, affection for a child. It was for a boyfriend or um, the one with whom we want to be you know, in love. Now let us come to this. Now see till now what we have seen. Till now, Akenbach had noticed so many things, but Polish boy has not responded to Akenbach yet. He did not talk, he did not say anything else. But now, here he said something to Russian family, who was just next to him, next to Polish boy in the beach. And because of their ill manner, because of ill manner, this Polish boy scolds this Russian family. So this shows that Polish boy also has some emotion and he has feelings, feeling of being angry, feeling of being disappointed. So this quality when he saw, he already understood that he is capable of making love as well. Making love in a sense, uh, he was thinking of that. So that is what came in his mind, which was totally wrong. Akenberg takes out his traveling writing case and begins to write, begins to work. Now Akenberg, whatever he felt and whatever his desire was towards that boy, he starts jotting down in his write, in his literary work. He watched the boy play with other children. Because he was 14 year old boy, he started playing with other children. Jasu seems his closest friend. Now, out of all those children, there was a boy named Jasu. Okay, Jasu. And uh, he seems to be closest friend. And this is what he has observed while being at the beach. He feels his mind paralyzed by the languorous atmosphere. Now, he was so happy in that atmosphere. And uh, he was enjoying with his... With uh, uh, not only... That boy, but entire weather, entire nature had supported him. Akinbach makes out melodious but unclear syllables like Adzio or 
एडगियो नाउ ही प्रोनाउंसेस दिस नेम एडगियो और एडगियो एंड दिस इज मे बी जस्ट हू अनाउंस्ड और प्रोनाउंस्ड दैट बॉयज नेम दैट इज व्हाट आकिनबाग हर्ड एंड ही वाज ट्राइंग टू मेक आउट व्हाट हिज नेम वाज सो ही आर्टिकुलेटेड हिज नेम लाइक दिस एट जियो एंड एट गिव He gives a nickname to Polish Ted's is Tadzio or Tadzio. Akinbeg returns to his room at midnight and gazes in the mirror at his age featuring. Now the man who was able to make a name for this boy okay uh, gives another name that is pseudonym or nickname that is Tadzio. In Polish Tads. So He was happy that at least he got a name to call this boy. He is joined in the elevator by a group of boys including Tadzio. Now when he was using the lift, okay, in that lift there was this Tadzio also, the boy of 14 years. Close up close, Akinbag notices the boy looks pale and sickly. Now when he came closer, he found that the boy was very pale he was very yellow and it seems that he is sick he is ill the thought that tadzio might not live to grow old gives akenbag an explicable sense of relief now tadzio who was a small child who was not able to understand the malices of uh, elderly people okay uh, he says that tadzio was he as observes that tadzio was not capable of doing things just like a fresh healthy man but akinbag becomes very much relieved because at least he knew him that what his problem is and it was his appearance that he looked so lean and thin that's it when akinbag was walking on the street he encounters sirocco very hot wind which he could not tolerate and what happens uh, he comes back to his hotel because he feels feverish and he understands that this hot weather sorry the hot wind has come from libyan deserts and this comes usually because of italy malta and malta and sicily okay and it shows that these all places are becoming worse when we consider the nature's health so what happens he becomes feverish akinbag becomes feverish and he finds himself being very exhausted as well and he understands that his health is in danger so the place venice becomes a destructive one for him because after reaching here so many destructive things are happening to him he decides to leave venice for a resort near triste and he notifies the hotel of his plan now hoteliers they wanted to know why he is leaving the place because if there is negative feedback they have to improve on that so when he understand when they understand the plan of ekenbach they don't did not trouble him at all he arrives still undecided whether to take the train or not but he soon learns that his luggage was mistakenly checked for como for forcing him to remain in venice until he can regain the luggage now because of this luggage he could not leave venice understand until it comes to him from another place then only he can go anywhere otherwise he will leave venice and his luggage will arrive and who will give it back to him therefore he becomes a little bit cheerful for this reason that he doesn't have to leave venice but the reason was something else what was it let us see happy writer relaxing in his room that afternoon he sights tadzio through the window 
and realizes that the boy has been the reason for his reluctance to leave Venice. He sinks into the chair and rotates his limb arms in a gesture of calm acceptance. Now Akenbach becomes happy because of luggage. This was just an excuse. Okay, this was just an excuse because if somebody leaves the luggage, then they can send the address and ask the hoteliers to send him back to his correct place. But he was not interested in that because he wanted to be there as his uh, beloved Tadzio was about to come. So he becomes happy when Tadzio comes and understands that he doesn't want to leave Venice because of Tadzio's love. Now see here, Akenbeck knew that his luggage can be procured soon. But he stays there because it was just an excuse. He wanted to be there. And now he looked at Tadzio constantly, day and night. Occasionally he went inside the hotel. But there also he tried to find out where is Tadzio and he looked at his physique, his appearance and his movements. What did he do? Right from the morning till night, everything. So he started comparing, he started feeling that he is beauty incarnate. There is no beauty beyond that. He is so beautiful that he is meant only and only for Akenbach. And this is how they met. And this was also God's grace, he started thinking. Now, uh, he started thinking that the Socrates, wooing Socrates, trying to please Phaedus beneath a tree in Athens, teaching him about desire and virtues. Now, Socrates was a great, great, great writer and he had propounded so many theories. Now, this great personality was seen in dream by Achenbach that he was beneath the tree and he was trying to teach these two souls. Although Akenbach's luggage soon returns, he decides to stay in Venice. Now, see here, Akenbach's main motive was to be nearby that zero. And therefore, on the pretext of his luggage, he did not go out of Venice. He wanted to see that zero day and night. He continues to see that zero constantly, occasionally inside the hotel or around the city and always for hours each day on the beach. It means that Zio was being noticed by Akenbach everywhere. Wherever he went, he was there and whatever he observed, he wrote on his diary. And this gave, this routine work gave meaning to Akenbach's days. It means that Akenbach was looking for a perfect beauty for him and he found that beauty in Tadzio. Now he did not want him to go away from his eyesight ever. The narration follows Akenbach's thoughts as he worshipfully studies the most intimate details of Tadzio's physics and movements. Tadzio, who was a 14-year-old boy, he was able to change the mind of Akenbach. Now he were, had become a slave of his desires and hopes. Now what was his hopes? To be with Tadzio. So what he did, just like uh, a girlfriend and a boyfriend, he started observing his physique, his body structure and his movement, his gestures. And he was infatuated by everything. He liked everything of Tadzio, be it movement, be it uh, his uh, uh, possession, that is his body, everything. Now he feels he is gazing at beauty incarnate. Now he thinks that there is no beauty which is much more exquisite than Tadzio. Now this happens to everyone. If they like somebody, then even a goat becomes a beautiful creature. It becomes Cynthia in the case of boys and contrary when somebody is in love. So, love ruins our state of mind. That is 
what had happened to Akinbak. Now he was not able to understand what is his responsibility being an aged man of the society. Is it to make love with a is it to think of making love with 14 year old boy or it is to guide him to achieve his goals of life. So here Akinbak failed. Even though he was from a very good family, even though he had received awards for his writings, he failed here because he could not control his heart and mind. He writes a thesis on Tadzio intricately and feels it too. Therefore, at the end of his work, he is ashamed of transgressing. Now see here, he writes a theory, he writes a thesis, he writes a book on Tadzio. Now you must understand that what we can write on a person, unless and until we have put in our heart and soul to make that uh, trivial thing so much exquisite. This Tadzio was a small boy and there was nothing unique. He had not achieved great heights because of which uh, Akinbak can write something uh, like a book on him but we can understand that it was not legally acceptable that he had written he had imagined you know very intimate things about that zero which he has written in book that is why it had become a thesis a thick book and he agrees also at the last he accepts he becomes ashamed that he has transgressed that is, he had, you know, gone beyond the limit of social norms. So, he becomes ashamed. He becomes so much shameful of his act, but he could not help it. He could not help stop himself from writing those, imagining and writing those things about that zero. The next day, he wanted to be friend of this boy, but about to lay his trembling hands upon his shoulder, Akinbak hesitates and turns back embarrassed. Now, next day, being in that hotel, he wants to be friend of this boy. Plus, he wanted to touch his body. But because of excessive thinking in his mind, he stopped doing that. He could not keep his hand on its shoulder. And this happens when we have some, um, you know, dirty mind about something. Otherwise, he was a boy. He could have touched him, showered his love towards him had it been genuine but it was legally, un sorry, socially unacceptable that is why he hesitated. The narrator is distanced from Akinbag reporting uh, that it seems that the aging lover wishes to retain his illusions and not to know the reality of boy's personality. Now here the writer who was already uh, aware about the physical structure of this boy he starts imagining exotic things about this boy that is that zero and here narrator says that what that zero is and what he has imagined in his mind are they two same so this is what we get to see that even though he he has seen that zero he was not able to imagine something which is acceptable this means that everything should be done in a limit and if somebody is given power we cannot misuse that see Akinbak was making castles in the air but it was not stopped by anyone not even he himself that is very destructive for society and therefore it should be stopped We are told that Akenbach is no longer capable of self-criticism and that he is unable to analyze for himself whether conscience or weakness prevented him from speaking to the boy. Now, two things we must notice out here. Akenbach was an old man, but even after being old, he was not able to self, even he was not able to do self-criticism. It means that he was not able to analyze the mistake that he did. He was doing wrong thing. He knows it, but he, he wanted to ignore it because he wants to live his life at his old age. Now, because uh, he had imagined so many impossible things with Tadzio, 
he was embarrassed that is already told now why he did not speak to tadzio there were two reasons first of all i told you that he was not able to make a true judgment for himself and another one because of old age he had become weak now even if tadzio accepted his offer akenbach would not have been able to perform the things that he had imagined though it is so raw though it is so wrong we are we have to being literary uh, student literature student we have to speak out what happens to human life and change our mind accordingly and stop our uh, deeds wherever it goes wrong for that we need to be open that is what uh, we have to do here akenbach has no other work than watching the boy and writing about him he had become so much obsessed with this boy that every minute he was thinking about this uh, little lad and he was writing about him akenbach soon realizes that tadzio has become aware of his admiration and feels ecstatic now tadzio had also noticed that this akenbach loves him and that is why even tadzio becomes extremely happy tadzio seems to walk past akenbach's sorry bathing cabin purposefully and the eyes of the two often meet akenbach is able to feel his emotion now tadzio's feelings are also clear to akenbach that he wants to be with him number 2 tadzio had given opportunity so that akenbach can approach to him therefore he went to bathing cabin purposefully so that he can be closer to akenbach but akenbach because of weakness because of old age he created a veil he created a cover on his emotion it means he was not able to speak openly that that's that's you i uh, need your association for for the life but that's you's eyes there is a look of sweet curiosity now that's you who was very innocent boy he was so curious to know about akenbach what kind of affection he has for him and uh, this boy had sweet uh, you know sweetness and he was curious as well it was very innocent question that he that was roaming around in his mind one night after noticing the boy's family's absence at dinner akenbach encounters them returning from the pyre now akenbach who noticed this family day and night he becomes startled when there is no trace of this family on the dinner table he was he started thinking that whether they have left venice or what happened to them so he becomes so much relieved when he finds him finds them coming back from the door he was caught unprepared he is unable to mask his affection now akenbach who had love for tadzio he was not able to conceal it he was not able to cover it because they came because he because he was very much troubled by their absence and suddenly they appeared and his cheerful face cannot be revealed by any emotion so it was open to tadzio tadzio smile described as that of narcissus inquisitive yet troubled now we need to understand that who was narcissus narcissus is the son of river god narcissus is son of son of river god son of the river god and uh, his name is cephisus c e p h i s s u s cephisus okay so obviously gods they are not weird or they are not ugly they are handsome they are beautiful everybody likes to see their face so his appearance was just like that therefore he is regarded as narcissus inquisitive yet troubled inquisitive i told you that what was his question and troubled because he was very much troubled because he wanted to know whether it is socialistic or it is against social 
society. Akenbeck feels this smile to be a faithful gift, feeling delirious and overwhelmed. Now, uh, here he becomes very much crazy. Delirious means very much crazy of happiness because of his happiness. Now, why he was happy? Because of the gift, faithful gift that he received. How? By the smile of Tadzio. By the smile of Tadzio, he becomes very much overwhelmed. He rushes towards the hotel garden and confesses his love for Tadzio. Now, Akinbak could not stop himself because of this smile and he goes to Tadzio and confesses his love. Now, let's see what happens because this is the turning point in the novel. Now, after confessing his love to Tadzio, he comes back to hotel and notices that even as the height of the season approaches, the number of guests at the hotel dwindles. Dwindle means to become less, become smaller in number or to shrink. Now he notices that the number of tourists are less even though the tourist season was at peak. The hotel barber gives a faint idea about the reason. There was a hotel barber who cuts the cuts hair of the people. So he says that Akinbag perceives he says that because this is because of some disease. He gives just hint, but he did not assure because if tourists will be less in the hotel, even his uh, shop will not run. It will not make any profit. So he gives a faint idea to Akinbag. Akinbag perceives in the air the sweetish medicinal smell of bactericide. Now, the medicine was applied to him in the barber's parlor. He sees what are clearly euphemistic notices posted warning. Now, in the newspaper, while being in this barber's shop, he sees that euphemistic notices posted warning. Residents not to eat shellfish. This was the notice which is mentioned. Shellfish or produce or use water from the canals. Now, see, the warning was given by Hotel Barber and... He finds in the newspaper there was a clear warning. Euphemistic means blunt warning. It means a strict warning and there was no hiding at all. And this notice talks about the disease that was prevalent in nearby cities of this Venice main city. And they were instructed what to eat and what to leave. So this was shellfish which they need to leave and they should not drink water. Now, Akenbach was gradually understanding why tourists were less and this shows destruction of Venice. Gradually, Venice is dilapidating considering its natural beauty, considering its uh, environmental health and other reasons. Through a newspaper, he too gets the news of epidemic and fears that that zero will leave with his family now see in the newspaper and in news channel also it was clearly mentioned that this disease was widespread and because of fear people were people are going back to their home now instead of thinking about his own health he thinks that if that zero will go back to his place because of this disease then what he will do he is not thinking about his own health. The narrator tells us that he was being guided by the dark god. Now see, Akenbach knows that this is very much catastrophic, dangerous to be in Venice after knowing that the epidemic has spread, the pandemic had has spread uh, in Venice as well. He should have left Venice at one go. But he did not do that. Venice is described as a labyrinth. Labyrinth means in Hindi we call it bhul bhulaya. Alright. Where, where, you know, once we get into it, it's very difficult to come out of it. So, the 
place venice had also become same but it was made by he himself it was it could have been a normal place but because of akinbach's adamant nature it had become a catastrophic place for him it is this atmosphere into which uh, akinbach languidly slips now akinbach also becomes affected by this disease and see languidly in very exhausted manner he slips into it okay very easily he goes into the hands of this pandemic akinbag knows that he is being obsessed but could not do anything to stop this akinbag did not have any control in his emotion hence he had to surrender to pandemic and because of his obsession he puts his health into trouble now what happens ahead whether tadzio instructs him to go out of venice or tadzio himself becomes affected let's find out he keeps a watch on a spreading disease now akenbach becomes alert because of this pandemic though he had got slight infection he keeps on watching the update on disease through newspaper one evening a group of street musician gives a performance in the hotel's front garden this is very important please understand they are the messengers that to inform everybody that there was pandemic all around a group of musician street musician had come and gave performance in front of the hotel gate although he maintains a casual attitude he is in a state of rapture tadzio leans elegantly against a stone parapet nearby he again leans watched him keenly watched him now tadzio enjoys the songs and music which were played by street musician now akenback also looks at tadzio and becomes so much into the music but as he marches around akenback notices that he stinks of bactericide now this bactericide was coming the smell of bactericide was coming out of this mu- these musicians when akenback when he comes near akenback asks him in an undertone why venice is being disinfected now musicians were asked by akenback that why venice is being disinfected why they are spreading medicine all around this smells awful why is it being done but the performer insists that it is merely a preventive measure against the sirocco but this performer this musician that there is any problem he just says that no there is nothing to worry about it is just because of heat excessive heat that has come from italy known to be bad for the health and moves off he gives fake information to save his job to save his job because if he will not perform he will not be able to survive and uh, it might be the musician's work might be stopped by hotel if people will know that there is widespread epidemic the man is immediately descended upon and interrogated by two hotel employees now this man not only interrogated by hotel employees but other people as well but he assures them that he has been discreet and is released but he says that no there is no problem at all and uh, rest assured the government is doing things that they they must do so other people did not want to ask anything they got assured and then continued with their day to day work the next day finally akenback asks a cl- clerk at a british travel agency about the bactericide and finally forces him to admit the truth now this man british travel agency he says that yes the epidemic has reached to the zenith and therefore insecticide and pesticides medicines are being spread throughout the city It was clear that Asiatic cholera has migrated west from India. 
Now this disease had come from India to Venice. In the newspaper of Austria, it was mentioned that a man recently returned from Venice had been found with one of the illnesses. Now here, you know, this is a situation which was equivalent to Corona pandemic. We have heard at first that somebody from foreign had come to Kerala and then he infected everyone. The same thing has happened in Austria as well and this confirms that the virus is deadly. The Italian authorities did not spread the news for the sake of the tourist industry. Now see, everybody lied, hoteliers and these authorities because if there won't be any travel, then the travel industry will not pay tax to government and there won't be any money generating from day-to-day -day commodities as well. Therefore, Italian authority did not reveal it. The clerk urges Akenbach to leave. The clerk understands the gravity of the situation. Therefore, he instructs Akenbach to leave Venice. But he remembers the Byzantine mortuary and the strange figure who first incited him to travel. Now, if you remember, just nearby his place, he had seen this Byzantine mortuary who used to make sculptures. Okay, who used to make sculptures and coffin as well. So, he understood that going back is not going to be helpful at all. Therefore, he remains there. Uh, he remains there for traveling. And the thought of the life before these experiences fills him with repugnance. So, he thinks that what is life if it is not enjoyed? If I die just like this, then what is the use of having a great human life? By this time, we find Akenbach had become so mad. He had become crazy. He had become passionate about Tadzio. He becomes inflamed thinking of passionate adventures he and Tadzio could have if they were to stay on in a city full of chaos. Now, Tadzio and Akenbach, both of them, if only these two will be there in hotel, then it will be awesome. He thinks about that. And he starts imagining, the, you, you know, he starts seeing the dream that how wonderful it would be. And then he starts dreaming that there is a group of primitive people. Now, Akenbach awakens from the dream. Now, this dream, because in the dream, he finds that he is enslaved by the demon god. In the primitive people's group, he finds that there is a demon god who has enslaved him. Okay. Now, when he wakes up, he finds that except that Joe's family, no one else was present in the hotel. Now, Akenbach imagines that how wonderful the time will be with that Zio in this hotel. He thinks about his own benefit, but he is not realizing that it is... A very dangerous situation in this pandemic situation they should move away as soon as possible to some safer place but Akenbach did not do that now he becomes extravagant and uh, why extravagant just because of that zero he thinks about him day and night he thinks about spending time with him and for that he smartens himself he goes to the parlor he goes to buy different clothes or nearby hotel and then he becomes very smart and he was ready to interact with that zero. Akenbach loses his way in labyrinth, labyrinth in alleyways and canals. And here he exhibits the symptoms of fever. Now when he goes to nearby areas, what happens? He catches some symptoms of cold. And he becomes very thirsty, becomes very thirsty and then he eats strawberries. Now when he comes back, he understands that he wanted to go to some place called Tadzio. And uh, Tadzio after leaving Venice. 
He sinks on the steps of a well. Grass grows between the cobblestones and garbage in his garden about. Now this place is not at all wonderful. There are some problems but he is okay if Tadzio is there with him. Now here the reader understands that the glorious past of Akenbag becomes ruined. It is just because he did not have control over his emotions. Seeing baggage piled in the hotel foyer, hotel lobby, Akenbag makes inquiries and learns that the Polish family is leaving after lunch that day. Now, Akenbag becomes very much sad because Tadzio is also leaving with his family. He walks down to the deserted beach. He goes there and the beach becomes deserted because there are nobody and there is no uh, happiness in this beach where people used to come buy things. There used to be shops, there used to be fruit stalls, but there is nothing at present. It, is, it has become deserted, isolated. Akenbag watches Tadzio play with his few remaining playmates. Tadzio was found there and before leaving, he was playing with his playmates. But in the meantime, there was a violent wrestling which started. They started fighting. Jasu, as if this Jasu, the friend of Tadzio, wanted to take revenge for something on Tad Tadzio. Therefore, what he does, he puts Tadzio's face on into the sand. Tadzio is on the point of suffocation by the time Jasu finally lets go. Now Tadzio was saved when Jasu removes him from the sand. Tadzio walks away into the river, rebuffling Jasu's attempt at apology. Walks away into the water. He wanted to wash his face because his all over, all over his face it was sand. Now he bluntly refuses or rejects attempt of apology by Jasu. Jasu tries to take apology from Tadzio that sorry I did this to you but Tadzio refuses that. Reaching a sandbar, he turns and looks back at the beach and his eyes meet Akenbag's for the first time. Now Tadzio come, looks back to Akenbag and this was the first time that he sees him into his eyes. Akenbach's head sinks upon, down upon his breast, but in his mind, Tadzio smiles and beckons. Now see, Akenbach looks down. Okay, looks down. He's a, he, does, he does not have courage to look into the face of Tadzio. But even though he is looking at the breast of Tadzio, that is lower portion of Tadzio, he, in his mind, the face of Tadzio is smiling always. He remembers that smiling face of Tadzio, which has made, which had enslaved him towards Tadzio forever. Akenbax collapses in his chair and he is taken to his room. Now Akenbach becomes emotionally devastated and he collapses. It is because Tadzio was leaving and he has no right to stop him there. Later that day, the world, with respectful shock, receives the news of his death. Now here, finally we find Akenbach dies because of his adamant decision of not leaving Venice. So true intelligent man, he takes his steps according to the requirement. It's not that he will be a, an emotional fool and destroy all his glorious past. It's not that he could not have enjoyed life. He could have, but he sticked to only Tadzio, who was just a 14-year-old boy. He did not choose somebody who was of his age, who was of his age and who could be complementary to his life. So there are other more uh, problems with Akenbach's behavior. We will read in analysis of this novel. By then, we will stop this novel here and we will meet in another video soon. Till then, take care and 
all the best for your examination. God may provide all the happiness to you. Thank you.